Today, my journey to finding my roots has me making one of my favorite fermented foods, and that's ketchup. If you ever read the ingredients on a ketchup bottle, you might be kind of surprised at what all is in there. High fructose corn syrup typically is one of the ingredients, and I do everything in my power to steer clear of that. This recipe is super simple. It is um, very nutritious. It's loaded with probiotics, and it is better than anything you're going to find in the store. I honestly don't remember where I got the recipe. I researched several until I settled on this one, but I'll put the written recipe down in the comments below, actually in the description, and you can make your own fermented ketchup. I'm not going to give all of the measurements because they'll be in the recipe. I'll have both the weighted measurements and the volume measurements. So if you're not somebody who weighs your ingredients, you can make this just as easily as I can. I'm just using tomato paste, apple cider vinegar. This is whey from a batch of yogurt that I made. This is going to help jumpstart the fermentation process. We're only going to leave this on the counter for three days. And I'm using some local honey. When I can, I like to put the raw honey in these fermentations. I have used maple syrup. It works just as well. The recipe also says that you can use um, sugar of your choice, any sweetener of your choice. And then we're going to add a little bit of real salt, Redmond salt. I get my Redmond salt. Um, I have bought honey for Azure and the apple cider vinegar, and I normally use organic tomato paste. I get all of those from Azure Standard. I'll put a link below to that where you can also join Azure Standard. My favorite way of ordering from them is through a, a local drop. We have one right here in the town where I live, and it's super convenient. No sales tax, but there's a small percentage of delivery charge. It's by far my favorite place to order organic foods, and not just organic. Um, some things I order are not organic, but they're my preferred choices. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my scale on with the bowl on, that way it comes up to zero grams, and I know that I'm getting all my measurements just right. And I'm just gonna put this tomato paste in here. This tomato paste already has salt in it, and the recipe calls for salt but you could certainly use unsalted and then adjust the salt to your liking. So let's see, I've got a little bit left in there. Got all the tomato paste in there, and then I'm going to clear that out. And the next thing I'm gonna add is the sweetener. I'm putting the honey, so let's get that honey squeezed in there. I like to add from this squeeze bottle because it's more easy um, to control how much you're putting in because you definitely don't want to go overboard and put too much if you're pouring from say a one gallon container or even a quart um, jar you might kind of over pour so I'm going to zero that out again and I'm going to add the whey again this is from some yogurt that I made When I have an abundance of this whey, I put it in my smoothies. I've used it to bake bread with. In fact, the last loaf of bread that I made, I used whey instead of water. I put it on Elvis's food. It's very nutritious and again, loaded with probiotics. And then the apple cider vinegar. This is just a container that we keep filled on the counter. The sweet hubby likes to drink it every day in some water. And this is apple cider vinegar with mother. And I'm gonna get that added in there. And I'll zero that out again. And then I'm going to add the salt. What I'm going to do with this is get this mixed up thoroughly and then transfer it to this jar to ferment. I'll bring you back in just a minute. OK, 
Okay, I've got that thoroughly mixed and I'm just going to taste it to make sure I don't need a little bit more salt. Typically I don't, um, let's just see. It already tastes amazing and you could eat it just like this, but to get the probiotic benefits, you want to let it ferment. And once you put it in your refrigerator, it's with the whey in it, it lasts for several months. I mean, I'm not even sure. I just used the last of mine last night and I typically don't let it run out before I make more, but I found myself without any. But in three days, I'll have more. I've actually got just enough left in my jar for hamburgers that we're going to have tonight. So I'm gonna just get this added. This is a wide mouth, one pint mason jar. You wanna put it in any container that will give you a pretty tight seal. So I've got that in there. Makes a good bit, it's relatively inexpensive. This particular can of tomato paste at Walmart, non-organic, cost me a dollar and 25 cents. And, you know, of course there's other ingredients here that add to the cost, but not that expensive at all. This is a lid, it's a ball leak proof lid. And it's got a um, pretty tight seal. I'm gonna sit this on the counter away from any of my other fermenting foods. I've got water kefir going right now. I'll have yogurt going in a day or two. Um, often I have uh, milk kefir going. So I'll put this in a separate part of the kitchen so they don't cross um, ferment. And that's it, fermented ketchup. Thanks for joining me on my journey today to finding my roots. See you next time.